Hey guys, today we get to talk about the Arc Enemy Nico Boles. It is a collectible set. MSRP is $59.99 in the US. It is coming out very soon, June 16th. And the question you want to know, or the question you probably want answered, is should you buy it? Now we're going to take a look at all the decks. I've calculated the amount of money that if you were to TCG mid the entire all four decks, what it would come out to be. MSRP, remember, is $60. That, just to get straight to the point, the value of every card TCG mids, if you were to buy them individually, would be around $90, give or take $5. So let's go ahead with where this value is coming from. Now, you do have four decks. You have three of these Planeswalker decks. Gideon Jora has ticked up a ton since I last saw him, mainly because of the Gideon Tribal decks in Modern. It's not tier one, but people like it. It runs Gideon of the Trial, Gideon Jora being probably one of the stronger cards in that deck. So that particular card has ticked up. Chandra Pyromat Master, still pretty decent. And Nissa all good planeswalkers. There is never a bad planeswalker, right? And Gideon Jor being one of the better ones. Now, the artwork, in my opinion, is a little strange. I don't know if I prefer this artwork over the original one. I think the Nissa is pretty cool, but the Chandra and the Gideon, something seems a little off to me. So I'm not sure how collectible uh, these will be. Um, I'm not sure this is the preferred version. The pimp version of it will probably not be this version. So when you get one third of the price of the $6 can be pretty much covered by these free cards. That's already a good start, right? I do like a lot of value for pre-constructed decks to be in a few cards. So let's take a look at the Gideon deck. You got Gideon. And most notable here is you have something called the Titan, right? The Sun Titan, I believe, in this deck as a one of. Sun Titan has been slowly but steadily rising in price. It's one of the better Titans, always has been. You don't get any really special land, and your deck overall is, it's kind of meh. Like, there's not much value outside of Sun Titan and then the Gideon. The Gideon and the Sun Titan make a make. A tremendous percentage of this deck in terms of financial value. You do have one of the Mentor of the Meek, which is interesting. A lot of these lesser rares, they are going to be pulled down, pulled down by this deck. Flicker Wisp is also here. That used to be a pricey card. Then I believe they reprinted it and it's no longer, it's still a modern playable card. And out of this deck, I would say Gideon, you probably have your Sun Titan and then your Flicker Wisp as valuable cards. Now, that doesn't mean that the deck was not fun to play with. It just were an MTG Finance channel. So I felt like instead of telling you how awesome it would be to play with, we should actually go over the financial implications of if you want to buy this deck, is this deck worth buying? What is it worth? I think $60 is good enough. Here you have Chandra Pyro Master and you do have the Red Titan. Inferno Titan is in this deck. You also have a Gutter Snipe, which is semi-valuable. Torchling is okay. And most importantly, you have Grim Lava Mancer. So between the Planeswalker and Grim Lava Mancer and then the Inferno Titan, that is where the majority of your value will come from. I like the concept of keeping these together I feel like Arc Enemy, when you take them apart, that's very bad. The It has to be balanced. One time I was playing this, this was when Arc Enemy actually was semi-popular. And it was not balanced because the other person had a control deck which just took extra turns. And every time you take an extra turn, that's very good in Arc Enemy as the Nicol Bolas figure. But I like it. I think it's kind of clever and some of these cards for art and lore are unique. They're unique cards to this particular type of style. But I wouldn't take apart the decks 
and I think they're more valuable together as a set than they are separated. I don't believe they have much value, if any, separated in terms of what they would command on the market. Next, we get this card. I like it. It's got Anissa. Most notice what is missing is the Green Titan Prime, Prime Time, I believe it was his nickname. Uh, it's a little odd that that green one is missing, but you do have two interesting cards here. In addition to the Nissa, you have the Sword of the Animus. That card has been trending up and will no longer trend up. And you do have various lands, which are always good. And probably surprisingly, you have a Frag Tusk, which is a good card. So although none of the cards are... Oh, also you got Forgotten Ancient, which has been reprinted in pretty much every supplemental product in existence. I think Forgotten Ancient was to create a card where Magic used to ask people to create cards for them. And the player base created Forgotten Ancient. And they believed it was really good, but then it wasn't good. <laughs> player base, right? Um, anyway, this is a very interesting deck. I like the Nessa deck. I wish it had the green Titan, and that would be very valuable. But each of them are about equal in terms of value. Now we have the Nicol Bolas desk, uh, oh, deck. Nicol Bolas is a good planeswalker. He is semi-valuable. I'm looking at Flame Tongue Kavu. Used to be a very expensive uncommon. You got Vampire Nighthawk. That's good. Harvester of Souls. Oh, okay. Baleful Strix. That's a good one. That one used to be like $15, $20 before all the reprints happened. Dreadbore, that's no longer going to be pricey. You got two lightning bolts. It's not bad. You got two talismans. Now, the talismans are actually surprisingly pricey because they are mana rocks. And anytime you get a mana rock, it is pricey. You got your crumbling Nicopolis and a bunch of really interesting land. So overall, the Nicopolis desk deck if you split this among four friends that's the deck you want to come away with if not then get in the other two chandra and nissa are the less valuable of the two one of the important things to know about arc enemy is there is good value in the set but not tremendous value it's the msrp is 60 dollars. you cannot expect more than the value that you currently are given now Interesting part about it is outside of the four planeswalkers, you don't have that much in terms of money. So the four planeswalkers are the what people will want. They are the unique, different artwork. Assuming you like this artwork better, and my personal preference is no, then this will be very, very easy for you to get at $60. Now, in addition to all this stuff, the $90 value assumes that there is no value to the box, the deck boxes, or most importantly, the enemy spells, the arc enemy cards. I forget what they're called. They don't. They have a special name, don't they? Uh, the enemy cards, the big enemy cards. So, and then the die counter, which is always nice, it's worth a few dollars. So you do get to $90. And then you get whatever is in addition, which is the enemy cards and the die counter and a really nice box. Kind of looks like a board game. And I feel like it was priced to be a board game, which is really smart because that is an audience which the coast can reach quite easily. Uh, people who like playing board games. At my locals, there's like this group of people, they don't play Magic or Warhammer or any TCG games. I know Warhammer is not TCG, but that's also a very popular game. They just play board game. So I feel like this is a board game. You pay $60, which is about okay for a board game. If you want to see expensive ones, Settler of Catan is more than that, at least before discounts. And people can just come in the store, pick this up and learn a little bit of magic and have fun. I, that's a very good supplement. I approve of this supplemental product for casual players. And if you have people who come in, my significant other always has uh, some friends over and stuff, and we al we always have people who don't really know about magic, but they know I have a magic YouTube channel, and they want to know more, and then they just go to the house, and the house is littered with, like, fat pack boxes. I'll give you a tour sometime. It's, like, 
set up. I have my couch, I have everything, I have my dog room for Norman. Uh, everything's set up now. I'm just too lazy to give a tour. And yeah, but this would be perfect for those nights, those Wednesday, Thursday nights, Friday nights where you have friends over who are not interested in magic, but they are interested in board games. And this plays like a board game. So it's definitely a buy for me personally at $60. I think the value is there. And also it has a, another component where you just keep it all intact. And now you can play with your friends who don't really care about magic. And everyone can have a good time. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye.